All praises to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everyone joining me on this program. This is the Fountain of Israel's Bible Studies program, and as always, it's an honor for me to stand before you on the Lord's Holy Sabbath day. Now, with that, this is not an ordinary Sabbath day. This is one of the Most High's Moadims, or appointed times. This is the first in the spring Passover. Passover, the days of unleavened bread, because it kicks off unleavened bread. So we're going to observe Passover today. But before we get into the scriptures, speaking of which, I'll be reading from the scriptures version of the Bible. Before we get there, let me remind you to like, share, subscribe, and tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Don't forget to smash that notification bell because I don't want you to miss any of our lessons. And check the description box down below for more information for the scriptures and if you care to donate. Give me four lessons and then make your decision of whether or not you are being edified with this ministry. So subscribe, give me four lessons, and then judge after that. With that being said, let me just go ahead and get into the scriptures. Today we're going to be talking about Passover. Passover. And with that, we're going to start where we normally start, where the feast days are, and that is in Leviticus or Wahikra. So with that, we're going to go to Wahikra or Leviticus 23, and we're going to start at the very first verse. Okay, so we got N, Yah, uh, usually this is Yah, Yahweh, uh, Yahuwah, but I usually say Yah because as you can see, Yah isn't all of them. So I changed the uh, tetragrammaton and I just say, oh, I just shortened. I didn't change. I just shortened to Yah. That way we're all on the same page. So, and Yah spoke to Moshe saying, speak to the children of Yisrael and say to them, the appointed times of Yah, which you are to proclaim as set apart gatherings. My appointed times are these. Notice who he say they belong to. Six days work is done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest, a set apart gathering. You do no work in it. Uh, it is a Sabbath to Yah in all your dwellings. OK, so he starts with the seventh day of the week. Right. Because that's a part of his appointed time. The Sabbath is an appointed time It's weekly. Now we're going to get into the annual appointed times. Verse four. These are the appointed times of Yah set apart gatherings, which you are to proclaim at their appointed times. In the first in the first new moon, called new moon, month, moon, month, in the first new moon on the 14th day of the new moon. So in a new month, the first new moon is uh, uh, that that's how we start our months. Now, on the Gregorian calendar, we don't do that. It's completely all out of whack. But if you notice, if we were to go to a 13, if we go to a 13 month calendar, if we had that now, that's not the Hebrew calendar, but if we went to a 13 month calendar, you would notice if you divide 365 by 13, you will pretty much have, uh, you still have your same 365 and you will have your new month, the, the new moon or new month, the same time every month. I know that's not what we go by, but if we did, things would certainly be a lot simpler. We have 13 months, same amount of days in the year and same amount of days in a month. It'll all be about 28 days. So, but go figure. At any rate, let's continue. In the first new moon on the 14th day of the new moon or the new month between the evening is the Pasa to Yah, okay, or the Passover. And on the 15th day, of this new month is the festival of Matzat. Okay, that's the feast of unleavened bread. To Yah, seven days you eat unleavened bread. Okay, and on the first day you have a set apart gathering. You do no servile work or you know work for money type of thing. You can work to prepare for the Passover. You know you can prepare the feast. Uh, in, in in Old Testament times, you have to prepare the lamb. Okay. I mean, in the New Testament, too, when, when, when Yeshua came, he had them go prepare the Passover. So they talking about preparing the meal. Part of that meal was sacrificing the lamb, too. So, you know, that's how it is. So you can work. You can prepare uh, and cook and, and, and set things up and get ready to have this feast before the Lord. That's completely OK. So if you notice the, the weekly, the Sabbath 
kicks off this whole thing. I mean, every every week, every week, every week, giving us geared up, geared up, geared up. And then when it's time in the spring, this is when our Moedims or our set apart times start. This is when they start in the spring. Matter of fact, this is when our, our new year, okay? Uh, our new year just passed, okay? So the new year is in the spring and not in the dead of winter, okay, on the Hebrew calendar. No, I don't use the Hebrew calendar. I got to I use the Gregorian calendar, but I am aware that the times are different on the Hebrew or in the Hebrew culture rather than on the Gregorian calendar. I'm, I'm, I'm aware. So January 1 is not our new year, okay, and it's not the most high new year, okay. It's in the spring, brand new to life, you know, spring, life winter death so you know it's the same same with the time you know biblical times sundown boom it's a new day gregorian times you look at your watch it's midnight okay it's a new day but it's still dark so go figure so let's go ahead and go to the exodus okay so let's go to shemot or exodus and we're going to go to exodus 12 Okay, we're going to look at this a little bit. Go to Exodus 12, and we're going to start at 11. Okay, Exodus 12, we're going to start at 11 and read quite a bit of it, right? So 11, it says, And this is how you eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, meaning you're ready to go. And you shall eat it in haste, in a hurry. It is the Passah of Yah. Okay, this is the Passover of the Lord, right? This is the Passah of Yah. And I shall pass through the land of Mitzrayim on that night and shall strike all the firstborn in the land of Mitzrayim, both man and beast. And and on all the mighty ones of Mitzrayim, I shall execute judgment. I am Yah. And the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I shall pass over you and let the plague not come on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Mitzrayim. And this day shall become to you a remembrance, and you shall celebrate it as a festival to Yah throughout your generations. Celebrate it as a festival, an everlasting law, an everlasting law. Celebrate it as a celebration, as a festival. To remember what I did for you when I freed you from bondage. Okay. 15. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Indeed, on the first day you cause leaven to cease from your houses. For whoever eats leavened bread from the first day unto the seventh day, that being shall be cut off from Israel. And on the first day is a set apart gathering and on the seventh day you have a set apart gathering. No work at all is done on them. Only that which is eaten by every being that alone is prepared by you. See, you can prepare it, right? You can prepare it. And you shall guard the festival of Matzah. OK, this is unleavened bread for on this same day. I brought you your divisions out of the land of Mitzrayim. OK. And you shall guard this day throughout your generations in everlasting law. Okay? Oh, we're starting to understand this. Okay? And in the first month, on the 14th day of the new moon, okay? Listen to what it's saying. On the, in the first month, on the 14th day of the new moon, in the evening or at night, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 21st day of the new moon in the, in the evening, at night. See, this is why I read it from the scriptures. I like to use the other version so you can hear it plainly, right? You can hear it at evening or at night or this is a law, that kind of thing. See, everything uh, in our English, a lot of times it is watered down, okay? It makes it seem like it's all optional or kind of, eh, now, of course, there's some rebellious people out there who are going to still do what they want to do. They're still going to misinterpret it. They're still going to move the goalposts. They're still going to rebel. OK, we we I, I, I get it. OK, we all we understand that. OK, but we see when it says plainly. Right. So I like it going from instead of going from the Hebrew to the Greek to the Latin to English, we are going from Hebrew here to the English. OK, so you don't have to lose so much in the translation. Right. So that's that's why we do this. That's why it read. That's why it, feel, it hits different, doesn't it? It hits a little bit. Now, if this starting to hit a little different, please put a 100 
in the comment section down below. Let me know if it just hits a little bit different when we read from a different version. For me, I'm gonna say yes, it does. It absolutely does. Means the same, just hits a little different. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start back uh, at 18. In the first month on the 14th day of the new moon, in, in the evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the 20th first day of the new moon. In the evening, for seven days, no leaven is to be found in your houses. No leaven. For if anyone eats what is leaven, that same being shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether sojourner or native of the land. It doesn't matter. Do not eat that which is leavened in all your dwellings. You are to eat unleavened bread. So don't eat. Look at look at the thing. Uh, yeast, right? Or leavening agents. Look at the labels. It's going to say yeast or leavening agents. You're supposed to get all those things out. OK, before it gets dark and Passover, it should all be out of your house. Of course, you got to be preparing ahead of time. OK, uh, 21 and Moshe called for the elders of Israel and said to them, go out and take lambs for yourselves according to your clans and slay the Passat. See, you got to go prepare and ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lentils, the lentil and the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin and you none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning okay so you're talking you know putting the the blood on the on, on the doorpost doorpost and then across the top and when you go in there you don't come out okay and you shall take a bunch of the okay i said that da, 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 according to the clans and lentils doorposts uh, until the morning 23 and yah shall pass on to smite the misrites and shall see the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts and Yah shall pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. And you shall guard this word as a what law for you and your sons forever for you and your sons forever. And it shall be when you come to the land which Yah gives you as he's promised that you shall guard his service. And it shall be when the children say to you, what does this service mean to you? Then you shall say it is the Passah slaughtering of Yah, who passed over the houses of, of the children of Israel in Mitzrayim when he smote the Mitzrites and delivered our households. And the people bowed their heads and did obeisance. And the children of Israel went away and did so. And Yah, as Yah commanded, Moshe and Aaron, so they did okay so i want to give you the first account you know the passover being observed and how serious it was and how it's set up as an appointed time and even the most high said that it is for them to remember this is for remembrance this is why we do it today we do it just to remember because you're gonna get the people you're gonna get the naysayers oh well you know you can't oh we we're not in the land they were in the land right here they're they're in egypt they were not in the land for 40 years when they did it, when they when they observed it for 40 years. They were not in the land. But they observed it. They set up camp and they observed it. Even though many of them died out. And then when they got into the land, they kept observing it. See, this is what I don't understand. You're doing this. I, you, you, you've heard me say it when I've taught this lesson uh, in times past. I said the same thing. I mean, it's just like a it's like a reenactment. It's just a it's like when they do these Civil War reenactments and all of that. This is the same thing. This is just uh, kind of a rehearsal, kind of getting us ready for what is to come. See, when this things come back in full circle and then the most high come and he sets up the Levitical priesthood and this is, you know, in the kingdom and all this other stuff because we got to observe the Feast of Tabernacles and all that other stuff. I mean, a lot of people are going to be just lost. They will have no, no idea. Even if you don't get it 100% right, right now, you at least know what go, what's going on. You at least, well, okay, okay, I, okay, I see what we're doing. I see what we're doing. And then there's a hierarchy in the kingdom too. Where are you going to be on that hierarchy? Now, obviously, you can't have the top spot because that's already taken. Obviously, you can't take the, uh, the, 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 the spot of the 12, you know, because they're going to be sitting on thrones as well. You can't take the spot of, you know, King David. So we are starting to go down. You can't, can't, take, can't take the spot of Abraham. So we just keep going. Drop, 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 drop. Okay, where are you going to be? Are you going to even make it? Because you don't, because you got people out there that don't even want to hear. We don't have to do it. Don't take all that. We don't have to do it. 
You don't want to even rehearse the matter? You don't even want to see what it looks like? You don't at all? Nothing? But that's what you're going to get. That's what some of you guys, I'm, all, I'm talking about the ones who, 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 would, who would reject this whole idea. Okay? I'm, ta I'm talking about those who you know, you bring this stuff up, you bring up this law, you bring up this feast days and holy days, as it were, you bring up the, the dietary law, you, you bring, uh, bring, bring that stuff up. Bring it up and see the type of response you get. That's what I'm saying. When, when, when we say, hey, let's do what the Bible says. Then you watch this visceral, this, 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 this palpable, this audible remonstrance from the people who you are just trying, all you're trying to do is say, listen, let's just do what it says. I'm, I'm just going to, oh, you're, you're, you're legalistic or we're not in the Old Testament. You, you get what I'm saying? This is absolutely ridiculous. All he says from such the part. Just depart. Now, we can reason together. But if we're going to go absolute, I mean, from the ridiculous to the sublime, I, I, just, I can't, I, I, I'm done. I'm done. I, I, I can't do this. This is, this, this, this is, this is, this, this is out there. This is just, uh, I cannot do this. OK, I cannot away with this. I, I can't because because if, if we can't even agree on what it says and it says throughout your generations, teach it to your sons forever, forever and all that. Yeah, but. Yeah, but. OK, I can tell you right now, brothers and sisters, there's going to be a whole lot of yeah, but people them what their way out of the kingdom. Let's go on over to Matthew 16. Matthew 16. Yeah, Matthew chapter 16. And when we get to 16, I will start at verse 6. And Yeshua said to them, Mind and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, because we brought no bread. But Yeshua, aware of this, said to them, O oh, you of little belief, why do you reason among yourselves because you brought no bread? Do you still not understand? Neither remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets you picked up. Or the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many large baskets you picked up. How is it that you do not understand that I did not speak of you concerning bread, but to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees? Then they understood that he did not say be aware of the leaven of the leaven of bread, but of the teachings of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And this is this right here, this right here. This is why we go back to the scriptures. This is why we say beware of modern day Sunday Christianity. Because they say, but do not. And no, I'm not going to go bashing Christianity. You guys know where I stand with that. I mean, many of us came from that, okay? I'm not going to just bash it. I, I got lessons where I go at it, but this is not about going at it. What this is about is that you got to be aware of the doctrine. You got to be aware of the teachings of all, all these other religions. I mentioned Christianity because that's where most of you come from. Because they say one, the Bible says something, then they are reasoning away. When it looks like you have to be accountable, you have to do something. Then it's just reasonable. No, 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 no. It's just grace. No, 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 no. You don't have to do that. No, 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 no. It's just faith. 
Removing all accountability of what you and I have to do. Removing all accountability. Oh, you just trying to work your way. No, no, I have a responsibility. If the Messiah died for me, if he paid my sin tab, I got a responsibility not to run that tab back up. Does that make sense, brothers and sisters? Comment, comment down below. Just, just let me know if that, that, that makes sense. There is an accountability and a responsibility that you and I have. That if we are pardoned from our sins, and it wasn't a light thing, it wasn't a light affliction for someone to be 100% innocent and to take on the sin of all his people who are guilty. This is why he's the Lamb of God. For one person, the Messiah, to lower himself, to come down out of heaven, out of midst, out of Shemaim, to come down out of heaven, to lay down his majesty, to make himself a little lower than the angels, to walk among man, to live among sin and yet remain sinless and still say, not my will, but thy will be done. And to get beaten and humiliated and spit upon and stabbed and pricked and crucified and tempted on all fronts. And you're going to tell me or you're going to let someone tell you, you're going to tell me that there's no accountability, that we, that all, we all we do, just feed up and just believe, just, well, he paid it all, just believe. Yeah. That, that, that's what you're going to tell me. That, that, that's what we're doing. We're, that's it. That's it. No, no accountability. You don't have to do nothing else. So he comes to clear that debt. And you're free to just run that debt back up. I'm not saying that you won't make a mistake. You'll make a mistake. I may make a mistake or whatever, but we don't make a practice of it. We don't just do it all willy nilly. We fall down, we get back up, we repent, and we try not to make the same mistakes over and over and over and over and over. But you have someone come along and tell you this, this right here. For all you're going to get all you have to do is watch what you put in your body, take a day of rest, remember the feast days, which reveals his plan for his people. You know what? I pray you don't let someone fool you. I do. I do. I, I do. I, I pray you don't let someone come along and fool you. I pray you don't let some butter muffin come whispering in your ear and tell you some cockamamie story like that to get you away, to whisk you away. This is why he talks about, you know, uh, the seed, you know, planted on the good ground and rocky ground and all this. That's this is why. This is why, because you can have someone listen to a lesson like this and we're reading it from the scripture and then you can have someone come along and be like, oh, no, no, don't listen to those Israelites. No, they no, no, they 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 try to put you back under the law. You never. Was released from the responsibility of being righteous. See, they think I'm trying to put you under the law. I'm trying to get you back into covenant. Covenant means agreement. You have no agreement. You want to be without law. Okay, great. What did the Messiah say? Depart from me, ye workers of, depending on your translation, lawlessness, iniquity, sin. And what's the definition of sin, by the way, in 1 John? You guys know. Let's keep, let's keep going. If you follow me, Comment down below. Let's keep it going. We're gonna go to Mark. Cause this is just, this this is crazy out here. It's crazy out here. Let's go to Mark chapter eight. We're gonna go to Mark chapter eight. I'm gonna start in eleven. 
We're going to go to 11 through 21. 11 says this, And the Pharisees came out and began to dispute with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven, trying him, and sighing deeply in his spirit. He said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Truly, I say to you, no sign shall be given to this generation. And leaving them again, entering into the boat, he went away to the other side. And they had forgotten to take bread and they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. And he was warning them, saying, mind, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees of, uh, and of the leaven of Herodes. And they were reasoning with one another, saying, because we have no bread. And Yeshua, being aware of it, said to them, why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive nor understand? Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes, you do not see, and having ears, you do not hear. And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets filled with broken pieces did you pick up? They said to him, 12. And when I broke the seven for the 4,000, how many large baskets filled with broken pieces did you pick up? And they said, seven. And he said it to them, how do you not understand? How do you not understand? And I ask you, brothers and sisters, how do you not understand? This unleavened bread, this pasa is just not about, let's just, you know, let's just have, you know, some lamb. And it, it, this is it's much bigger than that. This is the beginning, the, the beginning of the our new year, right? The beginning of our Moedims so that you can walk therein. Like to the, right now, Passover. We're going to do Passover. And then you start walking in the newness of life. We have to understand how deep this thing gets. His majesty stepped down off the throne he had with his father to do this for you and I. But yet we can't find it in our hearts to try. Or you have those who have evil surmisings and they want, not only do they not want to try, they don't want you to try. That's serpent-like behavior, if you ask me. They don't even want you to do it. It's fine, they don't do it, but now they don't want you to do it. Let's keep it going. Let's go to Numbers. Let's go to Bob McBob, or Numbers 33. Numbers 33. And actually, when I get there, I'm only going to need the first three verses. Starting at verse 1. These are the departures of the children of Yisrael who went out of the land of Mitzrayim by their divisions under the hand of Moshe in Aharon. And Moshe wrote down the starting points of their departures at the, month, at the mount of Yah. And these are their departures according to their starting points. So they departed from Ramesses in first in the first new moon on the 15th day of the first month on the morrow of the Pashat, the children of Israel went out with boldness before the eyes of all the Mitzrites. Okay, before uh, the, the eyes of uh, all the Egyptians. Did all this right there in plain view of the Egyptians to see the power to witness the majesty. Now let's go on up to Exodus. Okay, let's go to Exodus a little bit. We're gonna walk this thing down. Now, when we get to Exodus, we want Exodus 13. And when we get to 13, I'm gonna start at verse one. Okay, one through 10 of Shemot or Exodus. And Yah spoke to Moshe saying, set apart to me all the firstborn 
the one opening the womb among the children of Israel, among man and among beasts. It is mine. And Moshe said to the people, remember this day in which you went out of Mitzrayim, out of the house of slavery. For by strength of hand, Yah brought you out of this place. And whatever is leaven shall not be eaten. So do not eat leaven. Today, you are going out in the new moon, Abib. And it shall be when Yah brings you into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hawites and the Yebusites, which he swore to your fathers to give you a land flowing with milk and honey that you shall keep this service in this new moon. Okay, again, this is what he's telling you. Seven days you eat unleavened bread and on the seventh day is a festival to Yah. Unleavened bread is to be eaten the seven days. How long are you supposed to eat unleavened bread? Seven days, okay? And whatever is leaven is not to be seen with you and leaven is not to be seen with you within all your border. And you shall inform your son in that day saying, it is because of what Yah did for me when I came up from Mitzrayim. And it shall be a sign to you on your hand and, on, and as a reminder between your eyes that the Torah of Yah is to be in your mouth for with a strong hand, Yah has brought you out of Mitzrayim. And you shall guard this law at its appointed time from year to year. And you shall guard this law at its appointed time from year to year. And you shall guard this law at its appointed time from year to year. Does that bear repeating? You see, sometimes when the words change, it starts to lose its meaning. And see, in the Hebrew, words are concrete, concepts are concrete. You know very well, it's a law. There's no, no allusions to it, 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 it is. Okay, it's very direct to law, and it should be kept. At least not that it should be remembered and performed to the best of our abilities. <sighs> Let's go back one chapter, 12, and we're going to go to 19. Shemot or Exodus chapter 12, 19 says, for seven days, no leaven is to be found in your houses. For if anyone eats what is leaven, the same being shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether sojourner or native of the land. It don't matter. Oh, that was just for Israel. A sojourner too, the stranger too. If you want to roll with Israel, you got to do what Israel does. It doesn't matter. And look at what he's asking of us. Don't eat leaven for seven days. That's it. <laughs> you see, I, I, I freed you. I saved you. I redeemed you out of the house of slavery. So do me this favor. Don't eat uh, leaven for seven days. Now, obviously, it has a deeper meaning. Obviously, he's trying to teach us something. But. Look at what he's, he's using, something practical. So for us today, yeast. Are your bread products, look, read labels. Look, it says yeast. Sometimes it'll say yeast. Sometimes it'll say leavening agents. Just get that out of your house. That's it. That's it. Have it gone before, before Passover begins. Just have it out of your house. That's it. And yet... Some people don't even want to do that. Let's go to Isaiah. Some people do not even want to do that. Yes, Yeshayahu or Isaiah 66. Yeshayahu, Isaiah 66. And when I get there, we just want... 
and three. And all these my hand has made, and all these that exist, declares Yah, yet to such a one I look, on him who is poor and bruised of spirit and who trembles at my word. But whoever slays the bull strikes a man, and whoever slaughters a lamb breaks a dog's neck. Whoever brings a grain offering, pig's blood. Whoever burns incense blesses an idol. Indeed, they have chosen their own ways, and their being delights in their abominations. See, what he's saying here is that he gave Israel a charge and said, okay, do this, do this, do it exactly the way he describes and prescribes. And Israel decided to go their own way and just say, hey, you know what? No, we're going to do this. So he said, look, if you're going to do it your way, when you do these things, it's just like this other thing. So when you do these things, whoever slays a bull strikes a man. That's not good. OK, whoever slaughters the lamb breaks a dog's neck. OK, like that's that's just now the dog is your sacrifice. Right. Whoever brings a grain offering is like bringing pig's blood to him because you want to do it your way. Whoever burns incense blesses an idol. You ain't talking to me. You blessing an idol. And incense symbolizes the prayers of the saints, right? So, indeed, they have chosen their own ways. He explains it right there. Because you can't say, oh, Brother Robert, teach. You, you, you're reaching. He says it right here. Indeed, they have chosen their own way. They want to do their own thing. That's what we do today. We want to just do our own thing. Chosen their own way and their beings delight in their abomination. They delight. You're happy. Oh, your truth is my truth. And, you know, we'll get that. No. I don't have a personal truth. There's reading and then there is interpretation. There's exegesis. There's interpolation. Which we shouldn't do. There's eisegesis. There's exegesis. There's no personal truth here. We read it. You tell me. You tell me. Yeah. Oh, well, that's your. OK, then you tell me. You you tell me. What does this mean? And whosoever shall slay the bull strikes a man. Whosoever slaughters the lamb breaks a dog's neck. Whoever brings a grain offering pig's blood. Whoever burns incense blesses an idol. Indeed, they have chosen their own ways and their being delights in their abomination. And he said he's going to deal with it. You can, you can read it out of your King James Version. That's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll listen to it from there. What do you got? Let's, we're in Isaiah. Let's go to chapter 1. Yes, Yahoo, chapter one. OK, and when we get there, we are going to read or start reading at verse 11. Verse 11. OK, let's pick it up a little bit. Verse 11, 11 through 15, which reads. And of what use to me are your many slaughterings, declares Yah. I have had enough of ascending offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who has required this from your hand to trample my courtyards? Stop bringing fruit, futile offerings, incense. It is an abomination to me. New moon, Sabbaths, the calling of gatherings. I am unable to bear unrighteousness and assembly. See, it is not the feast days because in Wahikra or Leviticus, he said, this is, this is what I want. I want you to do this. He's talking about you doing it your way. He's talking about you changing it up, doing it your way and just, you know, trying to get by or, or not doing it at all. He's, I, I, I'm tired of the unrighteousness behind it is what he's talking about. This is what he's talking about. Now, 14, my being hates your new, your new moons, not his, your new moons in your appointed times. They are a trouble to me. I am weary of bearing them. I'm tired of putting up with them is what he's saying, right? And when you spread out your hands, I'm about praying, I hide my eyes from you, even though you make many prayers. I do not hear. Your hands have become filled with blood. When you, Oh, most high, lift up holy hands. 
You deserve the praying. Nothing wrong with doing that, but see, you want to do it your way and not do it his way. He's getting sick and tired of it. He don't want to have anything else to do. He's, he's tired to do it the way I'm asking you to do it. Tell about the most high. Just do it the way I'm asking you to do it. But no, they want to do it their own way. That's what he's I'm tired of your new moons and your feasts and your slaughterings and your prayers and incense. In your offerings. I'm, I'm tired of yours. What about what I want you to do? Didn't he accept Abel's offerings and rejected Cain's offerings? Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Exodus chapter 20. Exodus 20. Let's just let's let's just keep going. Exodus 20, I'm gonna start at verse 1. And Elohim spoke all these words, saying, I am Yah your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of slavery. You have no other mighty ones against my face. You do not make yourself a carved image or any likeness that which is in the heavens above, or which is in the earth beneath, or which is in the waters under the earth. You do not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, Yah, your Elohim, am a jealous El, visiting the crookedness of the fathers of the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. But showing loving commitment to thousands, to those who love me and guard my commands. If you do what I say, I have loving commitment for you. To thousands. And he's talking about many, many generations. I'm just trying to get you to see, brothers and sisters. That's all. I'm just trying to get you to see. I'm just trying to get you to see where he is with all this. Go join me in Amos. We're going to go to Amos chapter 5. Amos chapter 5. And when we go to uh, chapter 5, we're going to read verse um, 21 and 22. 21 and 22. 21 says, I have hated, I have despised your festivals, and I am not pleased with your assemblies. Your, 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 your. He's not talking about his own. Don't get it confused. Okay. Though you offer me ascending offerings and your grain offerings, I do not accept them, nor do I look at your fattened peace offerings. Okay. He said, your, your, the, what, what you decide to do. See, if we don't want to do it his way, just don't do it. And I'm just talking about just observing it. You know, make a Passover meal or whatever. Obviously, we don't slaughter lambs and stuff. I mean, there's some camps out there that do, but we don't slaughter lambs if we're if you're a messianic. But we just remember we set we we set the day aside. We get the leaven out of our houses. We eat unleavened bread for seven days. That's it. We have a gathering. We have the, you have this lesson. Watch this lesson with your family. It's it's it, it's not that complicated to understand. It really isn't. Let's continue. We're in Amos. Let's go to Psalms or Tehillim 40. Let's go to Tehillim 40. 40. Okay. Chapter 40. And when I get there, we're going to start right at the beginning and read the first six verses. One, it says, I waited, waited for Yah, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. And he drew me out of the pit of destruction, out of the muddy clay, and he set my feet upon a rock. He is establishing my steps. Then... 
He put a new song in my mouth, praise to our Elohim. Many do see it in fear and trust in Yah. Blessed is that man who has made Yah his trust and has not turned to the proud and those turning aside to falsehood. Get that. Do not miss that. Turn aside to falsehood. Oh, Yah, my Elohim, many are the wonders which you have done in your purposes toward us. There is no one to compare with you. I declare and speak. They are too many to be numbered. Slaughterings and meal offerings you did not desire. And you have opened my ears, ascending offerings and sin offerings you did not ask for. See, he originally didn't even want that. See, some of y'all y'all might think that to be bad or something like that, but originally that's not what he wanted. He just wanted us to not sin. That's, ba that's basically what he originally wanted. The original idea is we not sin, but we messed that up. So he gave us a way. Gave us a way. Gave us a way out. Gave us a get out of hell free card. And some people won't use it. They won't cash it in. Sad state of affairs, brothers and sisters. Sad, sad state of affairs. Join me now in the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament, Hebrews chapter 10. And when we get to Hebrews chapter 10, we will be reading the first six verses, which reads, For the Torah, having a shadow of good matters to come and not the image itself of the matters, was never able to make perfect those who draw near with the same slaughter offerings which they offer continually year by year. Otherwise, would they have ceased to be offered? Because those who served, once cleansed, would have no more conscious of sin. Meaning, if, it if the blood of bulls and goats would have taken away sins forever, then we wouldn't have to offer it every year. Okay? That's basically what he's saying, right? Because he says, well, why would you need to do it again? If you go a whole year and you didn't sin, then why would you need to offer it, make another sin offering? You wouldn't need to because you didn't sin, right? But in those offerings, offerings is a reminder of sins year by year. For it is impossible for blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, coming into the world, he's saying slaughtering and meal offerings you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. Pause to note. Some people are going to say, oh, we read that in Psalms 40. It didn't say nothing about the body. It didn't. Okay. I'm not reading from the Septuagint, but if I were reading from the Septuagint, then it would say that. And for those who don't know, the Septuagint is the Greek translation of the Old Testament. Okay? Let us continue. Now remember, the translation was done by Greek speaking Hebrews. Okay, let's 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 just get that straightened out. Greek speaking Hebrews translated the Old Testament. They spoke both Greek and Hebrew and they translated the Old Testament to the Greek. So there's that. In ascending offerings and offerings for sin, you did not delight. You didn't really want it because what it meant, it meant that we messed up. I mean, that, that's what it meant. It meant we messed up. Let's go to Yeshiyahu. Okay, let's go to Yeshiyahu or Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah. Let's give honor where it is due and go to Isaiah 53 and read it in its entirety. No breaks. Who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of Yah revealed? For he grew up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He has no form or splendor that we should look upon him, nor appearance that we should desire him. Despised and rejected by men, a man of pains and knowing sickness. And as one from whom the face is hidden, being despised, and we did not consider him. Truly, he has borne our sicknesses and, car and carried our pains. 
yet we reckon him smitten, stricken by Elohim and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions and he was crushed for our crookedness. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. We all like sheep went astray. Each one of us has turned to his own way and Yah has laid on him the quickness of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, but he did not open his mouth and he was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shears is silent. But he did not open his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And as for his generation who considered that he shall be cut off from the land of the living for the transgression of my people, he was stricken. And he was appointed a burial site with the wrong and with the rich at his death because he had done no violence, nor was deceit found in his mouth. But Yah was pleased to crush him. He laid sickness on him that when he made himself an offering for guilt, he would see a seed. He would prolong his days and pleasure of Yah prospered in his hand. He would see the result of the suffering of his life and be satisfied. Through his knowledge, by righteous, my righteous servant makes many righteous, and he bears their crookedness. Therefore, I give him a portion among the great. And he divides the spoil with the strong because he poured out his being unto death. And he was counted with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. What does that sound like? This is why we do this. This is why, right here. We're gonna keep going. This is why, brothers and sisters. Join me in Zephaniah chapter nine. Or Zephaniah, let's see here. I, I usually go to the wrong one sometimes. Zephaniah, there is no chapter nine, I'm sorry. I, I wrote that wrong. So nine, let's see here. Is it chapter two? Or is it chapter three? I wrote the wrong thing, guys, I'm sorry. So, uh, chapter three, sorry, and nine, and we're going to read nine and then 11. For then I shall turn unto the people a clean lip so that they all call on the name of Yah to serve him with one shoulder. Now let's get to 11. In that day, ye shall not be put to shame for any of your deeds in which you have transgressed against me. For then I shall remove from your midst, your proud, exalted, uh, exulting ones, and you shall no more be haughty in my set apart mountain. When he makes us clean, when he changes us, when he makes us better than what we are now, that new body, that new temple. But all this is after the fact. Right now we are what rehearsing the matter. We're getting back into covenant. We're getting back into agreement with the Most High. That's what we should be working towards. All that he has done. Turn with me to uh, Matthew. Matthew. We're going to join. We're going to be here. Matthew. And we're going to start chapter 20 or actually 21. 21. And we uh, I want the first five verses. 21 first five verses and it says and when they came near to Yerushalayim and came to Bethphage at the Mount of Olives then Yeshua sent two taught ones saying to them go into the village opposite you and straightway you shall find a donkey tied and a coat with her loosen them and bring them to me and if anyone says whatever to you you shall say the master needs them and immediately he shall send them. 
and all this took place that it might be filled what was spoken by the prophet saying say to the daughter of zion seek your sovereign is coming to you meek and sitting on a donkey even a colt the foal of a donkey okay so we're going to continue and we're going to go over to john 8 which was the scripture i was supposed to read by the way but i wrote i wrote the wrong scripture down uh John chapter 8. Let's go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8, we're going to start at 21. John 8 verse 21 says this. We're going to do 21 to 24, then we'll move around a little bit. 21 says this. Therefore, Yeshua said to them again, I am going away and ye shall seek me. And ye shall die in your sin. Where I go, you are unable to come. Then Yahudim said, Shall he kill himself? Because he says, Where I go, you are unable to come. And he said unto them, You are from below, I am from above. And you are of this world, and I am not of this world. Therefore I said to you that you shall die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. I mean, you got to pay for your sins, not me. If you don't believe I am who I say I am, then you have to pay for your sins. It's really, it's, it's, it's really that simple. So we're going to do 31, um, 31 and 36. 31 says this. So Yeshua said to those Yahudim who believe him if you say in my if you stay in my word you are truly my taught ones and if and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free then answered him we are the seed of abraham and have been servants to no one at any time how do you say you shall become free right so this they kind of getting a little little puffed up there and yeshua answered him truly truly i say to you everyone doing sin is a servant of sin so that's what he, he talking about that's that's who you serve it right you 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 serve in sin okay and the servants does not stay in the house forever a son stays forever right okay so that's what we're talking about this this is the covenant the agreement that i'm talking about you're trying to be a son you're trying to be a member of the family brothers and sisters this is what we're doing we're observing what he wants us to do we're trying to be a member of the family okay and it says uh right here and 36, if then the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. If the S-O-N, if the capital S-O-N makes you free, you are definitely, definitely, unequivocally free. You are pardoned. But you got to get you some of this capital S-O-N. We got we, we, we to get that taken care of first. Matthew, let's drop, let's drop back Matthew 20. Let's start, start wrapping this up. We're going to go to Matthew 20. Matthew 20. And when we get to Matthew 20, we want to start at 25. 25, we're going to read 25 through 28. But Yeshua called them near and said, You know that the rulers of the nations are masters over them, and those who are great exercise authority over them. But... It shall not be so among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you, let him be your servant. And whosoever wishes to be first among you, let him be your servant. Even as the son of Adam did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Okay, I hope you guys catching that. To give, a, give his life as a ransom for many. This is what, I hope you guys are getting it. That's, I mean, that's all I can say. Let's just go. Let's just go to Acts real quick. Okay. Ma'asa'e. And you forgive my pronunciation. So Acts 20, and we're going to start at verse 1. Acts 20 and verse 1. Acts 20 and verse 1. And I'm going to read the first six verses. After the uproar had seen Shaul called the taught ones to him and have embraced them, went away to go to Macedonia. And having gone through those parts and having encouraged them with many words, he came to Greece, where he spent three months. And when he was about to sail to Syria, he decided to return through Macedonia. 
This is how it reads in the scriptures version, by the way. I know it's Macedonia, okay? But anyway, as a plot was made against him by the Yahudim, and he was accompanied by uh, Sopater of Beroia and Aristakos and Se Secundos of the Thessalonians and Gaios of Derby and Timotheos and Turkikos and Trophimus, Trophimus of Asia. Okay, this is just how it reads, guys. And these, going ahead, waited for us at Troas. And we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread and came to them to Troas in five days where we stayed seven days. So he observed in the New Testament, he observed the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is why he waited until that was over so he can go ahead and finish his journey. For those who don't think they still observed. This is also in the book of Acts. This is also after the resurrection of Yeshua and the ascension. He is already back in heaven by this time, and yet they're still doing it. So cancel those who try to trick you into thinking, oh, they didn't do it. That's just the Old Testament. You don't. It's OK, don't 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 let them fool you. OK, don't let them fool you. Let's continue. OK, we're going to go. We got our last three spots. Exodus 23. Exodus 23. Okay, we're going to do Exodus 23, we're going to do 14 through 16. 14 says this, three times in the year you are to celebrate a festival to me. Which one of these festivals, yeah? Guard the festival of Matzat. Seven days you, you eat unleavened bread as I commanded you at the time appointed in the new moon of Abib. For in it... You came out of Mitzrayim and do not appear before me empty handed and the festival of the harvest, the first fruit of your labors, which you have sown in the field and the festival of in gathering at the outgoing of the year, the end of the year, the outgoing of the year when you have uh, gathered in the fruit of your labors from the field. So he said this three times you're going to do this three times you're going to do this. Three times you're going to do this. Join me over in uh, Corinthians 11 or 1 Corinthians. Okay, so 1 Corinthians, if we want to get it at chapter 5. And when we get to chapter 5, we want to read the first eight verses. It is commonly reported. It's kind of reported that there is whoring among you and such whoring as it is not even named among the nations. So as one to have his father's wife and you have been puffed up and did not rather mourn. Do you, you, you all puffed up, you all high minded, but you should be mourning because that is a very evil, heinous act. OK, but rather more so that he who has done this deed be removed from among you. Man, you got to get people like that out, out of here. Right. For I indeed, uh, as absent in the body, but present in the spirit, have already judged one who did this as though I were present. In the name of our master, Yeshua, Messiah, when you are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our master, Yeshua, Messiah, deliver such a one up to Satan for destruction of the flesh in order that his spirit be saved in the day of the master, Yeshua. OK, your boasting is not good. But you do not know that a little leaven leavens the entire lump. So what does he say? Therefore, cleanse out the old leaven so that you are a new lump as you are unleavened without sin, without all these mistakes, all these blemishes. For also Messiah, our Passah or Christ, our Passover was slaughtered for whom? For us. New Testament. So. Then let us celebrate the festival. What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought we don't do that in the New Testament. I thought, I thought we don't do that. Verse 8 again. So let us celebrate the festival, not with old leaven, nor with the leaven of evil and wickedness, because this is what it means. That's the symbolic of getting the leaven out of your house. I'll t we'll talk about that more in the Unleavened Bread lesson, but I'm just going to give you the point here. 
but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I, I thought we didn't. I thought, what? 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 Uh-huh. Let's go to Deuteronomy 14. Close the lesson out. How do we sir, how, how do we put this thing together? Well, let's see what the Most High has to say about that. How do we put this thing together? Okay. Let's go to Dabarim 14, Deuteronomy 14. When we get there, we're going to read 22 through 26. And 22, and it says, you shall tithe without fail all the yield of your grain that the field brings forth year by year. And you shall eat before Yah, your Elohim, in a place where he chooses to make his name dwell. The, 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 the tithe of your grains and your new wine and your oil and of the firstlings of your herds and your sheep so that you learn to fear Yah, your Elohim. Now notice they're not even in the land yet. So wherever he chooses to put his name, wherever he chooses to put his name. So did he did he put it in your backyard? Perhaps if he's if he's telling you to observe this throughout your generation. So where do you happen to be right now? Do you join with a class, join with a camp somewhere that celebrates these uh, Mohadims? That may be where he chooses to put his name. Well, no, 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 no. bro. Did he not spread Israel out everywhere? Did he not? Was not Daniel in captivity and yet he was still trying to observe the dietary law? Was not Peter in, 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 in Acts uh, chapter 2, he was like, um, uh, when he, I'm, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 10, when he, was, when he was like, you know, not so Lord, I've never eaten any, still trying to keep it. Still, still trying to keep it. Because that thou shalt not kill, you can, t uh, you know, or commit no murder, you can take that with you. Thou shalt not commit adultery, can't you take that with you? So we're not in the land, so I guess it's okay just to commit to sleep with another man's wife. I guess, I guess that's okay. There's no civil law against it. You're going to do it? Let's keep going. 24. But when the way is too long for you so that you are not able to bring the tithe or when the place where Yah, your Elohim, chooses to put his name is too far for you, when Yah, your Elohim, is blessing you, then you shall give it in silver and shall take the silver in your hand and go to the place where Yah, your Elohim, chooses. And you shall use the silver for whatever your being desires. OK, what, what can we have for the cattle? Or for sheep, for wine, or strong drink, for whatever your being desires. And you shall eat there before the Yah, your Elohim, and ye shall rejoice and celebrate, party, you and your household. Everybody, have a good time. That's how, that, this is how it's done. See, some people will be so moved where the Most High chooses to put his name. Some people are so moved. People, they call, they call me all the time. Hey, brother, are you on, you know, on the land? I want to come and, and celebrate it with you. And so they're so moved. Because they want to go wherever, wherever the Most High put his name. I've seen others, they want to go to other uh, camps that, um, other camps or communities that do observe the appointed times. And they're going to pack up their family. They're like, look, we, we're going over here for the feast. And y'all bless them. Y'all bless them. I, I, I like that. Y'all bless them. But for some of you who can't do that, let your heart not be troubled. If you have to do it at home, do it at home. If you gather you and your family, if just a few people, a couple of the families, just a few of you, get together. Prepare this meal. Get all the leaven out of your homes. All the yeast and the leavening agents. Get it out of your homes. You prepare a feast. Have some lamb if you want. Have some unleavened bread, you know. Sometimes people, they make like the homemade or Tears, or they can use, uh, they can make non bread and stuff like that, or nan, non, however you say it. Prepare some lamb, or prepare some, you know, some, some bitter herbs, just your, your greens, you know, spinach and turnip greens and cabbage and collard greens. You, you guys get the point. So prepare these things in your home, just your family, or with other families. 
and celebrate and rejoice before the Lord for what he has done and what he's going to do. Show that you are a part of this covenant. Show that you want to get, you want to make it into the kingdom. Show that. And the only way to show that is when you participate. When you're not just on the sideline, you're actually participating in what the Most High is doing. This is the Passover. This is the Passah of Yeshua HaMashiach. I hope someone has been edified by this lesson. So until next time, I want to remind you first to like, share, subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Smash that notification bell and check the description box below for scriptures or in case you want to donate. Give me just four lessons. Subscribe. Give me four lessons. See what you think. If you're not being edified, then you may unsubscribe. So until next time, search the scriptures and prove all things. Shalom, Israel.